And we can't assume anymore that things that are normal for kids to go out and do, for all of our teenagers to go out and do, are just like they used to be. Dating is different. Partying is different. All these things are now different in this world, and they're not different in a good way. Students of Bishop Dwanger, all of you here, you're going to be invited to do these things, and you are required, you are called by Jesus Christ to live your life differently. You have to be a Christian in those cultural situations. You're going to be invited to parties. You're going to be going on dates. You're going to be doing those things. But what is the difference between a Bishop Dwanger student and any other student out there on the block? It's that you do so with Christ first. You do so knowing who you are as a beloved child of God. And you would never do anything in those situations that would make you a hypocrite. I think one of the things that our teenagers are looking for most in this world is people with integrity. Because if you look at the news and you look at our different uh, role models, you might say, throughout our country, very few of them have integrity to that. We need people who actually believe and practice what they say. Because any of the teachers here will tell you, if you don't actually believe what you think, or believe what you say, you go into that classroom, every student in here is going to know it, right? High schoolers have a talent for sniffing out hypocrisy. And we have to make sure that we are not hypocrites. And therefore, all of our students, it's incumbent upon you to not be a hypocrite. If you claim Catholicism, if you claim Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've got to live that life. You've got to do it. Because if you don't have integrity, you will never be respected in this world. Integrity is something that is so important. All these things are going to be hard for us to do. None of them are going to be easy. Counter being countercultural it's, by definition, means going against the grain. We're called to something different and we're called to something more. I've got a scenario for you that I want you to think about. I want you to imagine a culture where abortion is a regular reality. I want you to imagine a culture where the poor are neglected. I want you to imagine a culture where it's divided by racial tension. Imagine a culture where homosexuality and all the other sexual practices of the society tend towards hedonism, simply pleasure-seeking, no longer centered as a gift of God. Imagine a society where marriage is in such a state that the government has to make special programs just to encourage children because the birth rate is dropping so quickly that they can't sustain themselves. Imagine a society on the brink of economic collapse because they have lost any sense of center as to what is important in their lives. Does anyone think that that sounds familiar? A very important person in the church, one of the cardinals of the church, drew this comparison. But the place that I just described is not actually the United States of America, nor is it Europe, nor is it anywhere in our present age. What I just described to you was the state of the city of Rome at the time of Christ's birth. Rome was a place where immorality was rampant, where no one believed in integrity anymore. They believed in pleasure-seeking and pleasure-seeking at all costs. Rome was a place where, as long as the circus continued and there was bread in their bellies, the people did not care what they did. Rome wasn't anywhere where we as Christians were going to live. But what happened when Christians got there? Brothers and sisters, sometimes when we're called to be countercultural, we have the tendency to think that we can't, as individuals, do anything that will amount to any change in our society. Well, brothers and sisters, I have to tell you that Christianity toppled the pagan culture of Rome. 500 people changed that city, brought down an empire, and rebuilt it in the shape of Christ. 500 people. And we got a lot more than 500 people here. We can 
change our society. We can change our culture. And that's what this code of conduct is challenging each and every one of you to do today. We live in a culture that's no longer Christian. But if each and every one of us lives out that call, lives out this code of conduct, we can change that. We have the ability because we are given the most special gift in the world, which is the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Believe in that grace. And once more, we can topple a pagan culture. Once more, we can bring the culture back to God and godly values. Once more, we can make our community a place where everybody knows that God dwells. And I hope and I pray that each and every one of you tonight takes on that challenge to live your faith. Live it in such a way that everyone knows who you are. That's what Bishop Dwayne has to you. And you don't know them just because they're wearing a tie. You know them because of how they treat you. You know them by what they don't do. By how they don't get involved in those things in this world which promote alcohol, drugs, all the other things that ultimately lead to unhappiness, bitterness, jail, and horrible things. But they get involved with the things of heaven which will lead to utter happiness. They will know you because you are in the chapel. They will know you because you are kind to every single person you meet and you treat them like they are beloved sons and daughters of God. They will know you because you excel at everything you do. Because you do it for God and not for pleasure. Now, one of the greatest bits of advice that I ever got in seminary was, if you want anyone to listen to you, you better keep it short. <laughs> I'm scheduled for 10 more minutes, but brothers and sisters, I'd rather you spend 10 minutes thinking about what I said. You don't gotta do it here, you can do it anywhere. Remember, you have to be countercultural. Change your lives, change your homes, change your outlook on everything. And make it God centered. And these thousand people can change our community and make it centered on Christ. God bless you all. I'm praying for you if you ever need me. Follow.